Hoysala literature is the large body of literature in the Kannada and Sanskrit languages produced by the Hoysala Empire 1025 in what is now southern India. The empire was established by Nripa, II, came into political prominence during the rule of King Vishnuvardhana (1108–1152), and declined gradually after its defeat by the Khalji dynasty invaders in 1311. Kannada literature during this period consisted of writings relating to the socio-religious developments of the Jain and Virashaiva faiths, and to a lesser extent that of the Vaishnava faith. The earliest well-known Brahmin writers in Kannada were from the Hoysala court. While most of the courtly textual production was in Kannada, an important corpus of monastic Vaishnava literature relating to Dvaita dualistic philosophy was written by the renowned philosopher Madhvacharya in Sanskrit. Writing Kannada literature in native meters was first popularized by the court poets. These meters were the Sangatya, compositions sung to the accompaniment of a musical instrument, Shatpadi, six line verses, Rigali, lyrical compositions in blank verse, and Tripadi, three line verses. However, Jain writers continued to use the traditional shampoo, composed of prose and verse. Important literary contributions in Kannada were made not only by court poets but also by noblemen, commanders, ministers, ascetics and saints associated with monasteries. <laughs> Kannada writings Overview Beginning with the 12th century, important socio-political changes took place in the Deccan, south of the Krishna River. During this period, the Hoysalas, native Kanadigas from the Malnad region hill country in modern Karnataka were on the ascendant as a political power. They are known to have existed as chieftains from the mid-10th century when they distinguished themselves as subordinates of the western Shalukas of Kalyani. In 1116, Hoysala king Vishnuvardhana defeated the Cholas of Tanjore and annexed Gangavadi parts of modern southern Karnataka, thus bringing the region back under native rule. In the following decades, with the waning of the Chalukya power, the Hoysalas proclaimed independence and grew into one of the most powerful ruling families of southern India. Consequently, literature in Kannada, the local language, flourished in the Hoysala Empire. This literature can be broadly subdivided as follows, works dominated by the themes of Jain writings, contrasting works by Virashaiva writers not belonging to the Vachana poetic tradition, rebuttals to Shaiva writings from Jain writers, early Brahmanical works Vaishnava, works from the birth of the Bhakti devotional movement in the Kannada-speaking region, writings on secular topics, and the first writings in native meters Rigali, Sangatya and Shatpadi. As in earlier centuries, Jain authors wrote about Tirthankars saints, princes and other personages important to the Jain religion. Jain versions of the Hindu epics such as the Ramayana and Bhagavata tales of Hindu god Krishna were also written. According to R. Narasimacharya, a noted scholar on Kannada literature, more Jain writers wrote in Kannada than in any other Dravidian language during the Augustan age of Kannada literature, from the earliest known works to the 12th century. The Virashaiva writers, devotees of the Hindu god Shiva, wrote about his 25 forms in their expositions of Shaivism. Vaishnava authors wrote treatments of the Hindu epics, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata and the Bhagavata. Breaking away from the old Jain tradition of using the shampoo form for writing Kannada literature, Harihara penned poems in the Rigali meter in Shiva Ganada Ragaligalu his nephew Raghavanka established the Shatpadi tradition by writing a unique version of the story of King Harishchandra in Harishchandra Kavya 1200. Sisamayana introduced the Sangatya meter in his Anjaneshrita and Triparitahana 1235. However, some scholars continued to employ Sanskritic genres such as Shampu, Ramachandra Charitapurana, Shataka, 100 verse compositions, Pampa Sataka, and Ashtaka, eight line verse compositions, Mudaj Ashtaka. The exact beginnings of the Haridasa movement in the Kannada speaking region have been disputed. Bailur Kashavadasa, a noted Harikatha scholar, claimed in his book Karnataka Bhaktavajaya that the movement was inspired by Saint Achalananda Dasa of Tervekari in the modern Tumkur district in the 9th century. However, neither the language used in Achalananda Dasa's compositions nor the discovery of a composition with the pen name, Achalanada Vitala, which mentions the 13th century philosopher Madhvacharya, lends support to the 9th century theory. 
Naraharadartha 1281, one of earliest disciples of Madhvacharya, is therefore considered the earliest Haridasa to write Vaishnava compositions in Kannada. Secular topics were popular and included treatises on poetry and writings on natural sciences Radhasutra, mathematics fiction grammar rhetoric and others. Important contributions were made by some prominent literary families. One Jain family produced several authors, including Malakarjuna, the noted anthologist 1245, his brother-in-law Jana 1209, the court poet of King Veera Balala II, Malakarjuna's son Kashiraja 1260, considered by D. R. Nagaraj, a scholar on literary cultures in history, to be the greatest theorist of Kannada grammar, and Sumanobana, who was in the court of King Narasimha I and was the maternal grandfather of Kashiraja. Harihara and his nephew Raghavanka poets who set the trend for using native meters, came from a Shaiva family devotees of the god Shiva, the support of the Hoysala rulers for the Kannada language was strong, and this is seen even in their epigraphs, often written in polished and poetic language, rather than prose, with illustrations of floral designs in the margins. In addition to the Hoysala patronage, royal support was enjoyed by Kannada poets and writers during this period in the courts of neighboring kingdoms of the western Deccan. The western Shalukas, the southern Kalachuris, the Sunna Yadavas of Devagiri and the Silharas of Kolhapur are some of the ruling families who enthusiastically used Kannada in inscriptions and promoted its literature. Writers bilingual in Kannada and Telugu gained popularity which caused interaction between the two languages, a trend that continued into modern times. The Virashiva canon of the Kannada language was translated or adapted into Telugu from this time period. Palkariki Somanatha a devotee of social reformer Basavana, is the most well-known of these bilingual poets. The Chola chieftain Manakoda used many Kannada words in his Telugu writings. After the decline of the Hoysala Empire, the Vijayanagara Empire kings further supported writers in both languages. In 1369, inspired by Palkariki Somanatha, Bhima Kavi translated the Telugu Basavapurana to Kannada, and King Deva Raya II c. 1425 had Chimaris's landmark writing Prabhulangalalay translated into Telugu and Tamil. Many Virashaiva writers in the court of the 17th century Kingdom of Mysore were multilingual in Kannada, Telugu, and Sanskrit, while the Shravaishnava a sect of Vaishnavism Kannada writers of the court were in competition with the Telugu and Sanskrit writers. Information from contemporary records regarding several writers from this period whose works are considered lost include Maganandi, probable author of Rama Keda and Guru of Kamalabhava of 1235, Srutakirti, Guru of Agala, and author of Raghava Pandavya, and possibly Possibly a Jina Studi, 1170, Samba Varma, mentioned by Nagavarma of 1145, Vira Nandi, Chandraprabha Kavyamala, 1175, Durandi Pandita, Bayala Raya Karita and Varangana Karita, Amrita Nandi, Donventari Nayantu, Vidyanatha, Pradaparudriya, Ganeshvara, Sahitya Sanjavana, Haribhakta, a Virashaiva mendicant, Vidabhashya, 1300, and Shiva Kavi, author of Basava Purana in 1330. Jain epics During the early 12th century ascendancy of the Hoysalas, the kings of the dynasty entertained imperial ambitions. King Vishnuvardhana wanted to perform Vedic sacrifices befitting an emperor, and surpass his overlords, the western Shalukas, in military and architectural achievements. This led to his conversion from Jainism to Vaishnavism. Around the same time, the well-known philosopher Ramanujacharya sought refuge from the Cholas in Hoysala territory and popularized the Sri Vaishnava faith, a sect of Hindu Vaishnavism. Although Jains continued to dominate culturally in what is now the southern Karnataka region for a while, these social changes would later contribute to the decline of Jain literary output. The growing political clout of the Hoysalas attracted many bards and scholars to their court, who in turn wrote panegyrics on their patrons. Nagachandra, a scholar and the builder of the Malanatha Jinalaya, a Jain temple in honor of the 19th Jain Tirthankar, Malanatha, in Bijapur, Karnataka, wrote Malanathapurana 1105, an account of the evolution of the soul of the Jain saint. According to some historians, King Veera Balala I was his patron. Later, he wrote his magnum opus, a Jain version of the Hindu epic Ramayana called Ramachandra Charitapurana or Pampa Ramayana. 
Written in the traditional shampoo meter and in the Pamacharya tradition of Vimalasuri, it is the earliest extant version of the epic in the Kannada language. The work contains 16 sections and deviates significantly from the original epic by Valmiki. Nagachandra represents King Ravana, the villain of the Hindu epic, as a tragic hero, who in a moment of weakness commits the sin of abducting Sita wife of the Hindu god Rama but is eventually purified by her devotion to Rama. In a further deviation, Rama's loyal brother Lakshmana instead of Rama kills Ravana in the final battle. Eventually, Rama takes Jaina Diksha converts to Digambara monk, becomes an ascetic and attains Nirvana enlightenment. Considered a complementary work to the Pampa Bharatha of Adhikavi Pampa 941, a Jain version of the epic Mahabharata, the work earned Nagachandra the honorific Abhinava Pampa, New Pampa. Only in the Kannada language do Jain versions exist of the Hindu epics, the Mahabharata and Ramayana, in addition to their Brahmanical version. Kanti, 1108, known for her wit and humor, was one of the earliest female poets of the Kannada language and a contemporary of Nagachandra, with whom she indulged in debates and repartees. Rajaditya, a native of either Puvanabhaj or Raybog, the modern Belgam district, was in the Hoysala court during the days of King Veera Balala I and King Vishnuvardhana. He wrote in easy verse on arithmetic and other mathematical topics and is credited with three of the earliest writings on mathematics in the Kannada language, Vyavaharaganita, Shetraganita and Lilavati. Udayaditya, a Chola prince, authored a piece on rhetoric called Udayaditya It was based on Dandan Sanskrit Kavyadarsa. Age of Harihara Harihara or Harisvara, 1160, who came from a family of Karnakas accountants in Hampi, was one of the earliest Virashaiva writers who was not part of the Vachana poetic tradition. He is considered one of the most influential Kannada poets of the Hoysala era. A non-traditionalist, he has been called, ''poet of poets'' and a ''poet for the masses''. Kannada poetry changed course because of his efforts, and he was an inspiration for generations of poets to follow. Impressed by his early writings, Kareya Padmarasa, the court poet of King Narasimha I, introduced him to the king, who became Harihara's patron. A master of many meters, he authored the Garijakalyana, marriage of the mountain-born goddess, Parvati, in the Kalidasa tradition, employing the Shampu style to tell a ten-part story leading to the marriage of the god Shiva and Parvati. According to an anecdote, Harihara was so against eulogizing earthly mortals that he struck his protege Raghavanka for writing about King Harishchandra in the landmark work Harishchandra Kavya c. 1200. Harihara is credited with developing the native Rigali meter. The earliest poetic biographer in the Kannada language, he wrote a biography of Basavanna called Basavarajadevara Rigali, which gives interesting details about the protagonist while not always conforming to popular beliefs of the time. Ascribed to him as a group of 100 poems called the Nambianana Rigali, also called Shivaganata Rigali or Saranacharitamanasa, the holy lake of the lives of the devotees, after the saint Nambiana. In the Sataka meter, he wrote the Pampa Sataka, and in the Ashtaka meter, the Mudaj Ashtaka in about 1200. Famous among Vaishnava writers and the first Brahmin writer of the Smarta sect of repute, Rudrabhata wrote Jagannatha Vijaya in a style considered a transition between ancient and medieval Kannada. Chandramoli, a minister in the court of King Veera Balala II, was his patron. The writing, in Shampu meter, is about the life of the god Krishna. Leading to the gods' fight with Banasura, it is based on an earlier writing, Vishnupurana, Nemakandra, court poet of King Veera Balala II and the Silhara king Lakshmana of Kolhapur, wrote Lilavati Prabandham the earliest available true fiction and hence a novel in Kannada, with an erotic bent. Written in the Shampu meter, with the ancient town Banavasi as the background, it narrates the love story of a Kadamba prince and a princess who eventually marry after facing many obstacles. The story is based on a c. 610 Sanskrit original called Vasavadatta by Subandhu. His other work, Naminathapurana, unfinished on account of his death and hence called Ardhanami or incomplete Nemi, details the life of the 22nd Jain Tirthankar Naminatha while treating the life of the god Krishna from a Jain angle. Palkariki Somanatha, a native of modern Karnataka or Andhra Pradesh, is considered one of the foremost multilingual Shaiva or Shiva following poets of the 12th and 13th centuries. 
Historians are divided about the time and place of his birth and death and his original faith. He was adept in the Sanskrit, Telugu and Kannada languages. He was a devotee of Basavanna, the founder of the Virashaiva movement, and all his writings propagate that faith. It is generally accepted that he was born a Brahmin and later adopted the Shaiva faith, although according to the scholar Bandaru Tamaya he was born a Jangama follower of the Shaiva faith. His time of birth has been identified as either the 12th century or late 13th century. In Kannada, his most important writings are Silasampadane, Sahasragananama and Pancharatna. His well-known poems, written in the Rigali meter, are Basava Rigali, Basavadya Rigali and Sadguru Rigali. He is known to have humbled many Vaishnava poets in debates. Other well known personalities from the 12th century included several Jain writers. These include Agala, who authored Chandraprabha Purana, 1189, an account of the life of the 8th Jain Tirthankar Chandraprabha, Sujanatamsa, who wrote a panegyric on Gomateshwara of Shravanabelagola, and Vrita Vilasa, who authored Sastra Sara and Dharmapariksha. The latter was Vilasa's version of the Sanskrit original of the same name written by Amitagati c. 1014. In this shampoo writing, the author narrates the story of two Kshatriya princess who went to Benares and exposed the vices of the gods after discussions with the Brahmins there. The author questions the credibility of Hanuman the Hindu monkey god and the Vinaras monkey-like humanoids in the Hindu epic Ramayana. Although controversial, the work sheds useful information on contemporary religious beliefs. Kareya Padmarasa, a Virashaiva poet patronized by King Narasimha I, wrote Dikshabadi in the Rigali meter in 1165. He would later become the protagonist of a biographical work called Padmarajapurana written by his descendant Padmanaka in c. 1400. The Brahmin poet Deva Kavi authored a romance piece called Kusumavali 1200, and Brahmin poet Kavi Kama 12th century authored a treatise called Shringara Ratnakara on the rasa flavor of poetical sentiment. Sumanobana 1170 was a poet grammarian and the Katakacharya military teacher. Under King Narasimha I he was also a priest in Devagiri, the Sunayadava capital. Jain Virashaiva conflict Harihara's nephew and protege, the dramatic poet Raghavanka of Hampi, whose style is compared to that of 10th century poet Rana, was the first to establish the Shatpati meter in Kannada literature in the epic Harishchandra Kavya. 1200. According to L. S. Seshajiri Rao, it is believed that in no other language has the story of King Harishchandra been interpreted in this way. The writing is an original in tradition and inspiration that fully develops the potential of the Shatpati meter. The narration has many noteworthy elegiac verses such as the mourning of Chandramati over the death of her young son Lohitashva from snakebite. The very writing that made Raghavanka famous was rejected by his guru, Harihara. His other well-known writings, adhering to strict Shaiva principles and written to appease his guru, are the Siddharama Charitra or Siddharama Purana, a larger-than-life stylistic eulogy of the compassionate 12th-century Virashaiva saint, Siddharama of Sonalij, the Somanatha Charitra, a propagandist work that describes the life of Saint Somaya or Adaya of Pulije, modern Lakshmishwar, his humiliation by a Jain girl and his revenge, the Virasvara Karita, a dramatic story of the blind wrath of a Shaiva warrior, Virabhadra, the Harihara Mahatva, an account of the life of Harisvara of Hampi, and Saraba Charitra. The last two classics are considered lost. In 1209, the Jain scholar, minister, builder of temples, and army commander Jana wrote, among other classics, Yashodhara Charite, a unique set of stories in 310 verses dealing with sadomasochism, transmigration of the soul, passion gone awry, and cautionary morals for human conduct. The writing, although inspired by Vidiraja's Sanskrit classic of the same name, is noted for its original interpretation, imagery and style. In one story, the poet tells of the infatuation of a man for his friend's wife. Having killed his friend, the man abducts the wife, who dies of grief. Overcome by repentance, he burns himself on the funeral pyre of the woman. The stories of infatuation reach a peak when Jana writes about the attraction of Amruthamati, the queen, to the ugly Mahout Ashtavakra, who pleases the queen with kicks and whip lashes. This story has piqued the interest of modern researchers. In honor of this work, Jana received the title Kavichakravarthi, Emperor among poets, from his patron, King Veera Balala II. 
His other classic, Ananthanatha Purana 1230, is an account of the life of the 14th Tirthankar Ananthanatha, Andeya, taking a non-conformist path that was never repeated in Kannada literature, wrote Madana Vijaya, Triumph of Cupid. 1217–1235 using only pure Kannada words desia and naturalized Sanskrit words tadbhava and totally avoiding assimilated Sanskrit words tatsamas. This is seen by some as a rebuttal meant to prove that writing Kannada literature without borrowed Sanskrit words was possible. The poem narrates the story of the moon being imprisoned by the god Shiva in his abode in the Himalayas. In his anger, Kama Cupid, the god of love, also called Manmata assailed Shiva with his arrows only to be cursed by Shiva and separated from his beloved. Kama then contrived to rid himself of Shiva's curse. The work also goes by other names such as Sobagina Suji, Harvest of Beauty, Kavain Jela, Cupid's Conquest, and Kabagara Kava, Poet's Defender. Kama has an important place in Jain writings even before Andeya. The possibility that this writing was yet another subtle weapon in the intensifying conflict between the dominant Jains and the Virashivas, whose popularity was on the rise, is not lost on historians. Malakarjuna, a Jain ascetic, compiled an anthology of poems called Suktasudarnava Gems from the Poets, in 1245 in the court of King Vira Someshwara. Some interesting observations have been made by scholars about this important undertaking. While the anthology itself provides insight into poetic tastes of that period and hence qualifies as a history of Kannada literature, it also performs the function of a guide for poets, an assertive method of bridging the gap between courtly literary intelligentsia and folk poetry. Being a guide for professional intellectuals, the work, true to its nature, often includes poems eulogizing kings and royalty but completely ignoring poems of the 12th century Vachana canon folk literature. However, the selection of poems includes contributions from Harihara, the non-conformist Virashaiva writer. This suggests a compromise by which the author attempts to include the rebels. Other notable writers of the early 13th century were Bandavarma, author of Harivamsabudaya and Jiva Sambodhana 1200, the latter bearing on morals and renunciation, and written addressing the soul, Balachandra Kavi Kandarpa, the author of the Belgam Fort inscription who claimed to be master of four languages. Maganandicharya, the author of an extinct commentary on the Jain theological work Sasrasara Samukhaya Tiku for which there are references, and the available commentary called Padoarthasara giving a complete explanation of Sanskrit and Prakrit authoritative citations, Hastimala, who wrote Pravaparana, Chandrama, author of Karkala Gomechavara Charite, and Sisamayana, who introduced a new form of composition called Sangatya in 1232. He wrote an allegorical poem called Triparadahana. Burning of the Triple Fortress, and Anjaneshwarita. The latter work was inspired by Ravasena's Sanskrit Padma Charitra. Somaraja, a Virashaiva scholar, wrote a eulogy of Yudvata, the ruler of Gursopa, and called it Sringarasara or Yudvata Kavya, 1222. Other Jain writers were Parsva Pandita, author of Paravanathaparana, and Gunavarma II, the author of the story of the ninth Jain Tirthankar Pushpadanta called Pushpadanta Purana both were patronized by the Radha kings of Sandati. Palalva Dandanatha, a commander, minister, and the builder of the Harihareshwara temple in Harihar, wrote Haricharitra in 1224. He was patronized by King Vira Balala II and his successor, King Vira Narasimha II. Polije Somanatha authored a book on morals called Sumsvarasataka. Topic: <laughs> Consolidation of grammar. Kashiraja was a notable writer and grammarian of the 13th century. He came from a family of famous poet writers. Although five of Kashiraja's writings are not traceable, his most enduring work on Kannada grammar, Shabdamanadarpana, Mirror of Word Jewels. 1260, is available and testifies to his scholarly acumen and literary taste. True to his wish that his writing on grammar should last as long as the sun, the moon, the oceans and the Meru mountain lasted. Shabdamanadarpana is popular even today and is considered a standard authority on old Kannada grammar. It is prescribed as a textbook for students of graduate and postgraduate studies in the Kannada language. 
Although Kashiraja followed the model of Sanskrit grammar of the Katantra school and that of earlier writings on Kannada grammar by King Amogavarsha I of the 9th century and grammarian Nagavarma II of 1145, his work has originality. Kashiraja's lost writings are Chalapalaka Charitam, Sri Chitramail, Shubhadraharana, Prabhadachandra and Karatam or Kiratarjuniam, a major development of this period that would have a profound impact on Kannada literature even into the modern age was the birth of the Haridasa servants of Hari or Vishnu movement. This devotional movement, although reminiscent in some ways of the Virashaiva movement of the 12th century which produced vachana poetry and taught devotion to the god Shiva, was in contrast intimately devoted to the Hindu god Vishnu as the supreme god. The inspiration behind this movement was the philosophy of Madhvacharya of Udupi. Naraharadartha is considered the first well-known Haridasa and composer of Vaishnava devotional songs in Kannada. Before his induction into the Madhva order, he had served as a minister in the court of Kalinga modern Orissa. The Vaishnava poetry however disappeared for about two centuries after Naraharatirtha's death before resurfacing as a popular form of folk literature during the rule of the Vijayanagara Empire. Only three of Naraharatirtha's compositions are available today. Other writers worthy of mention are Mahabala Kavi, the author of Naminatha Purana, 1254, an account of the 22nd Jain Tirthankar Naminatha, and Kumudendu, author of a Jain version of the epic Ramayana in Shatpati meter called Kumudendu Ramayana in 1275. The effort was influenced by Pampa Ramayana of Nagachandra. Kumara Padmarasa, son of Kareya Padmarasa, wrote the Sananda Charitre in Shatpati meter. Radha Kavi, a Jain noble, wrote a quasi-scientific piece called Radhasutra or Radhamala in 1300. The writing bears on natural phenomena such rain, earthquakes, lightning, planets and omens. A commentary on the Amara Kosa, considered useful to students of the language, called Amara Kosa Vyahayana was written by the Jain writer Nashiraja Towards the end of the Hoysala rule, Nagaraja wrote Punyasrava in 1331 in Shampu style, a work that narrates the stories of Puranic heroes in 52 tales and is said to be a translation from Sanskrit. <laughs> <laughs> Sanskrit writings The Vaishnava movement in the Kannada-speaking regions found momentum after the arrival of the philosopher Ramanujacharya 1017 Fleeing possible persecution from the Chola king who was a Shaiva, Ramanujacharya sought refuge initially in Tandanur and later moved to Melkot. But this event had no impact on Vaishnava literature in Hoysala lands at that time. However, the teachings of Madhvacharya (1238–1317), propounder of the Dvaita philosophy, did have a direct impact on Vaishnava literature in both the Sanskrit and Kannada languages. This body of writings is known as Haridasa Sahitya (Haridasa literature). Born as Vasudeva in Pajika village near Udupi in 1238, he learnt the Vedas and Upanishads under his guru Akiyotapriksha. He was initiated into sannyasa asceticism after which he earned the name Madhvacharya or Anandadurtha. Later, he disagreed with the views of his guru and began to travel India. He successfully debated with many scholars and philosophers during this time and won over Naraharadurtha, a minister in Kalinga, who would later become Madhvacharya's first notable disciple. Unlike Adi Shankaracharya who preached Advaita philosophy monism and Ramanujacharya who propounded Vishishtadvaita philosophy qualified monism, Madhvacharya taught the Dvaita philosophy dualism, Madhvacharya taught complete devotion to the Hindu god Vishnu, emphasizing Jainamamarga or the path of knowledge, and insisted that the path of devotion can help a soul to attain elevation. Athmanathi. He was however willing to accept devotion to other Hindu deities as well. He wrote 37 works in Sanskrit including Dwadasha Sutra in which his devotion to the god Vishnu found full expression, Gita Beshya, Gita Tatpariya Nirnaya, Mahabharata Tatpariya Nirnaya, Bhagavata Tatpariya Nirnaya, Mayavada Khandana and Vishnu Tatwa Nirnaya. To propagate his teachings he established eight monasteries near Udupi, the Uttaradi Monastery, and the Raghavendra Monastery in Mantralayam in modern Andhra Pradesh and Nanjanagud near modern Mysore. The writings of Madhvacharya and Vidyatirtha author of may have been absorbed by Sayanacharya, brother of Vidyaranya, the patron saint of the founders of the Vijayanagara Empire in the 14th century. 
Bharatasvaman who was patronized by Hoysala King Ramanatha wrote a commentary on Samaveda, Shadguruzashiya wrote commentary on Aitareya Brahmana and Aranyaka, and Katyayana wrote Sarvanukramani. A family of hereditary poets whose names have not been identified held the title, Vidyachakravarti poet laureate in the Hoysala court. One of them wrote Gadyakarnamrita, a description of the war between Hoysala King Veera Narasimha II and the Pandyas, in the early 13th century. His grandson with the same title, in the court of King Veera Balala III, composed a poem called Rukmanikalyana in 16 khandas chapters and wrote commentaries on poetics on the Alankarasarvasva and Kavyaprakasa. Kalyani Devi, a sister of Madhvacharya, and Travikrama, his disciple, wrote commentaries on the Dvaita philosophy. To Travikrama is ascribed a poem narrating the story of Usha and Aniruddha called Ushaharana. Narayana Pandita composed Madhvavijaya, Manamanjari and a poem called Parijataharana. The Jain writer Ramachandra Maladari authored Guru Panchamriti. Literature after the Hoysalas Literary developments during the Hoysala period had a marked influence on Kannada literature in the centuries to follow. These developments popularized folk meters which shifted the emphasis towards desi native or folk forms of literature. With the waning of Jain literary output, competition between the Virashaiva and Vaishnava writers came to the fore. The Virashaiva writer Chamarasa author of Prabhuling Galilei, 1425, and his Vaishnava competitor Kumaravyasa Karnada Bharata Kathamanjari, 1450, popularized the Shatpati metric tradition initiated by Hoysala poet Raghavanka, in the court of Vijayanagara king Deva Raya II. Lakshmisa, the 16th-17th century writer of epic poems, continued the tradition in the Jaimini Bharata, a work that has remained popular even in the modern period. The Tripadi meter, one of the oldest in the Kannada language Kap Arabata inscription of 700, which was used by Akka Mahadevi Yogana Trividi, 1160, was popularized in the 16th century by the mendicant poet Sarvina. Even Jain writers, who had dominated courtly literature throughout the classical period with their Sanskritic shampoo style, began to use native meters. Among them, Ratna Karavarni is famous for successfully integrating an element of worldly pleasure into asceticism and for treating the topic of eroticism with discretion in a religious epic written in the native Sangatya meter, a meter initiated by Hoysala poet Sisamayana. His magnum opus, the Bharatadisa Vaibhava, though the Vaishnava courtly writings in Kannada began with the Hoysala poet Rudrabhata and the devotional song genre was initiated by Naraharadurtha, the Vaishnava movement began to exert a strong influence on Kannada literature only from the 15th century on. The Vaishnava writers consisted of two groups who seemed to have no interaction with each other, the Brahmin commentators who typically wrote under the patronage of royalty, and the Bhakti devotion writers also known as Haridasas who played no role in courtly matters. The Bhakti writers took the message of God to the people in the form of melodious songs composed using folk genres such as the Kirthane, a musical composition with refrain, based on tune and rhythm, the Salati, a composition based on rhythm, and the Ugaboga, a composition based on melody. Kumara Vyasa and Timana Kavi were well known among the Brahmin commentators, while Parandara Dasa and Kanaka Dasa were the most notable of the Bhakti writers. The philosophy of Madhvacharya, which originated in the Kannada-speaking region in the 13th century, spread beyond its borders over the next two centuries. The itinerant Haridasas, best described as mystic saint poets, spread the philosophy of Madhvacharya in simple Kannada, winning mass appeal by preaching devotion to God and extolling the virtues of jnana enlightenment, bhakti devotion and vairagya detachment, vachana poetry, developed in reaction to the rigid caste-based Hindu society, attained its peak in popularity among the under-privileged during the 12th century. Though these poems did not employ any regular meter or rhyme scheme, they are known to have originated from the earlier Tripadi metrical form. The Virashaivas, who wrote this poetry, had risen to influential positions by the Vijayanagara period 14th century. Court ministers and nobility belonging to the faith, such as Lakana Dandesa and Jakanarya, not only wrote literature but also patronized talented writers and poets. Virashaiva anthologists of the 15th and 16th centuries began to collect Shaiva writings and Vachana poems, originally written on palm leaf manuscripts. Because of the cryptic nature of the poems, the anthologists added commentaries to them, thereby providing their hidden meaning and esoteric significance. 
An interesting aspect of this anthological work was the translation of the Shaiva canon into Sanskrit, bringing it into the sphere of the Sanskritic marga or mainstream as opposed to desi or folk cultural order. See also Kannada literature Sanskrit literature Indian literature Notes <laughs>